Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. My name is Kat or Catherine and I'm a knitter based in Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom. This is my little space where I have documented my knitting journey from project one through to now where we have a nice little mindful, intentional community of makers, non-makers and just nice people. Hi. If you've been here before, really nice to see you again. I hope that this finds you well. Equally, I hope this finds you well if you're new to this little space. I hope that you enjoy your little moment here. Um, yeah, so today I do have some projects to share. I didn't feel like I'd done too much knitting because I really caught the spinning bug, but I think I've done some and I'm quite excited to share them with you. Uh, yeah, it is very strange. We went away at the weekend to see Alex's parents and to celebrate an engagement for uh, a couple that we know very well, which was really lovely. And just what happened to the weather? Friday it was icy cold, but not icy, but like 13 degrees Celsius, which is pretty chilly. Then it went up to like 21 on Saturday and it was back cold again. I mean, I'm not, I don't mind. I've got two layers of knitwear on and a hat in the house. And this is the right temperature for today. Um, go figure. I am wearing a Let Lopey hat. So this is a yarn, Icelandic yarn by Istex. Istex. Uh, and this is a pattern that I improvised, if that's the right word. So I just made it up as I went along. It is one that I use uh, almost all the time if I'm not following a pattern. I just kind of make it up. I know where I'm at now. Um, but this is like my favorite style and this is one of my favorite hats. I think the fact that it is incredibly neutral, incredibly warm, whilst not being too long, like it could be long, that's not my, really my thing. Um, so it's warm enough, but kind of airflow and all of that. And then secondly, I am wearing my Land Girl jersey or sweater by Whistle Bear, knitted in the most beautiful piece piece yarn. This is the colorway Amaranth. And uh, yes, so I think already this I know is going to get quite a bit of wear this year. Um, when the weather really turns. I don't I don't knit too much with red, but I for, I do forget how much I love this colour. So I'm very happy to have this in my wardrobe and I'm not surprised it's getting worn as much as it is. So yeah, I am sipping on a coffee this morning. I felt like I was in a bit of a Mondays when I woke up got quite a lot to do. Um, even Alex sent me a to-do list on top of, which actually most of it was really nice. It's not anything to be like, he's not been like, you have to do this, but he sent me a thing, a few things to remember to do and to help him out with some brewing that he's doing or distilling. Uh, yeah, so to help get me out, I've got a coffee. I'm very much enjoying it. It is a Ethiopian Sitamo and yes, it's very enjoyable. Um, yeah, I've got a feeling I'm going to be a little bit chaotic today, so hopefully I can still bring a moment of calm and share with you everything that I hope to share without skipping over bits. But like I always say, I try and put everything in the, the box down there, uh, so if you want to know a bit more you can click through. I do tend to use Ravelry links, and that's just because it's there. Uh, if, if you need a hand finding a pattern outside of Ravelry, I'm happy to help, but usually you can just copy and paste the the name of the sweater or the garment or the pattern uh, from the description and then hoi it into Google and you'll, you'll be away. Yeah. So, let's start off with an item. This is Still one of my favourite project bags. I still need to give it a bit of TLC in terms of putting it through the wash. But it just comes with me if I go out for a walk or anything because it's got clips where the uh, bag has 
and over the shoulder, like a crossbody. I take it off when I'm not out, just because, just because. Um, and in here, <laughs> I'm very excited to share. We have an item that is finished, knitted using these two yarns. These are 100% uh, British wool cones from Woolly Knit. I knitted my Sulaulu in this yarn in a very different colour, in a brown colour. And so far it's wearing nicely. I have not had it for very long uh, finished, maybe... <laughs> found my nose ring and played with it sorry uh two three three or four weeks maybe three weeks um but it's holding up it looks nice i will make sure to keep checking in with it in regards to that because it's a very affordable wool it is a hundred percent yarn uh, yarn it's a hundred percent yarn in front it's a hundred percent wool and it's really affordable this cone was 16 pounds and had 500 grams on it which I think it's, it's fingering weight, so it's about 2,300 meters. And this one was 125 grams of yarn. Uh, this is what I have left of the green, and this is what I have left from a fairly large garment for me. So I think if you actually wanted to do this jumper, you'd, it's one size fits all, you'd be fine with this, especially if you even went up a needle size and did some modifications, so that's that yarn and I will make sure that at some point I do the little thing where I show you it on. I just felt like it was something that I needed to hold up rather than put on and sit and try and explain. So this is my bouquet sweater. So the bouquet is by Junko Okamoto. And I did modify this, and not the most heavily, I must say, but quite a bit. So this is actually written for worsted weight yarn. I have held, as I've explained previously, I have held four ply yarns double to create a DK weight yarn. Um, it's a one size pattern, so I felt like I'm pretty short for a start and then I'm fairly small for my so I felt like this was going to really be very oversized on me and I thought a way to negate that was to be going down a weight in yarn and it was definitely the right option one second I'm just going to get my laptop because I did write notes as I as I went I did write notes as I went was that good English um, I did write notes and they are on the Ravelry project page and I will try and remember to link to that as well. If not, there's a link to my projects and it'll be the first one up there. Modifications. Not really a modification, but I spoke about it briefly last time. When I do a tubular cast on or any cast on, when I'm going to join in the round, I cast on one extra stitch and slip the extra stitch over the first stitch of the round so I can pull it tight and don't have a... A jump. It works for me. I like like how it works. Just a useful, hope maybe useful tip. I didn't do quite as many increases as the pattern suggested, and I also divided sooner for the sleeves. It would have actually ended divided here, and I could have divided much higher actually, but hindsight, you know. Um, and I'd knitted the whole body before I kind of realised that to stop the arm lifting it would have needed to be. But it still fits nice, I'm still really happy with the fit. Um, what else did I do? I, <laughs> as much as I'm like farm emo is my aesthetic, there's a little chicken here and I said last time yeah, if the colours had been different and it had been less botanical I might have done the chicken but I opted to slightly alter this chart and then start it a little bit later to fill up this space here. Where I did not cast on or have as many stitches on the body, the way I negated that also was to, this should have been like a V, so it would have been repeated um, and I just didn't knit that so it's slightly 
off cent not off centered but a little bit asymmetric but the whole thing really is it's not very symmetrical so I feel like this works I used the I always forget which way around it is ladder back jacquard technique so you end up using purl stitches to put the extra stitches at the back so you can't see them through the front which just means that you can have really long floats or apparently long floats that aren't you know gonna get caught as you're putting them on and they're very stretchy which is also very handy I've used this technique quite a few times now and I think it's Susan Bryant that the tutorial I find most useful it seems fairly easy for me to click through you can see where she's doing bits so you don't need to watch the whole thing if you're referring back trying to remember how to close them or you know decrease the, the stitches out so that you no longer have to knit with them I also changed just slightly the rate of decreases for the sleeves this is just my personal preference so I left a few more stitches and did a slightly quicker decrease on the final round before the ribbing not very creative but it's just what I like to do if I'm doing this sort of jumper and yeah so overall I'm really happy with this I love how the floats have come out I gave this just a wash I didn't I wouldn't say that I blocked it um, and almost all of it is great I'm really happy apart from this little bit here at the back hopefully you can see there's like a, a ruche of sorts and it doesn't look like it's anything to do with um, the floats at the back they really you know quite happy and I, I think I will give it maybe a little steam block and see if I can't get that out before I put it on but otherwise oh, I hope you could hear that little Audrey just made a really sweet sound um, she's actually stolen my seat where I was sitting just getting all, getting all my bits together just now so it's probably a bit warm and she's just stolen the seat um yeah so I'm, I'm really quite chuffed with this and if if you're not adverse to you know making sure you've swatched and are sure that you're going to get the size that you want um and you don't mind long floats this is a wonderful pattern and a lovely sort of learning pattern it was for me I learned a few things kind of I'm not sure if I really did but I did um, how much I enjoy color work how much I enjoy moving my hands in different ways then by all means this is a great pattern if you this I wouldn't recommend it really for your first jumper unless you were uh, really brave and not brave as in uh, you know because I believe that everyone should try everything without any sort of worry but if you're willing to put in a bit of time kind of brave then definitely do this knit this pattern it is I would say Junko's patterns are easy enough but uh, to read and work through but they're not necessarily my favorite style to work from yeah so there's this this is this pattern and I'm I've got to say these colours, the green is just a colour that I really love, um, but the marl reminds me of a slightly lighter version of a jumper that my mum and dad both wore quite a lot growing up, so there's something really cosy and comforting about this one. It's kind of familiar, but a new kind of familiar, and hopefully it will be around as long as the jumper that my mum had. Did I talk a lot about that? Hopefully it was useful. I think, um, I know someone will probably ask, but I did, I swatched, but I did use the recommended needles. I managed, I found that the gauge was nice enough, dense enough, it is gonna be a very warm jumper, but it would give me not quite as much positive ease as it would have done had I have gone up. And it, was, it wasn't gonna be so dense if I went down, which I could have done quite easily and there would have been, it would have been even more fitting, but I think, I think I hit the sweet spot. Oh. But while I 
remember we are this is because of Alex because Alex is really into yarn shows apparently we are going to be at the Southern Wool Show which is really exciting there's a few makers that I have you know chatted to online and never ever got to meet uh, a few I think are people that I've kind of actually been talking to like you know every few weeks on like face-to-face -face zoom type things so that's really exciting um, but if you're gonna be there let me know if I'm you might have guessed I'm gonna hopefully spend a bit more time looking at fibers and maybe spindles or wheels not necessarily to purchase a wheel I definitely need to save and really think I think my heart is set on a second hand wheel because for me that's just the best if I can do it uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be lovely to see you if you're going. Let me know. That's me saying, say something online if you'd like. That's not me like, yes, I'm gonna be bringing my electric piano. Oh, this is a weird one. Sorry, thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, right, let's do a quick bit of show and tell with this one. I will put the little link to, I think it's Minou Batik, who is based in Greece, um, who sent me this quite some time ago now. I really love this bag, uh, just because it's sort of, I don't know how, it's in my care and it's off-white and it's not, it's not damaged too badly for, for a toddler like me. There's fluff on it. But yeah. So I am using, well, I think I showed these before. Yes, I did. So I am knitting the Interchangeable Mitts by Emily Foden, who did the Knits About Winter book that I'm not gonna show this week, just for a change, but it's a very good book and I won't go on about it <laughs> this week. Uh, so as you, you, if you weren't here, I'd done this much and it wasn't very much to share. But now I've started the increases for the thumb. Um, I've done this much. I was quite monogamous on knitting on my bouquet. It just felt like it was towards the end and if we're potentially doing a little bit of traveling, I wanted to focus on having small projects that I could knit on rather than the big one. You know, uh, so really enjoying these. I am knitting them two at a time because I recently knitted two, one pair of socks on a magic loop doing two at a time and they seem to just knit themselves. They definitely had texture, which I think made them quicker than this is going, but the kind of, oh, I don't know if you can see any, but you'll be able to see the there's like almost neps in the same the slightly fluffy bits that really doesn't bother me at all I'm really into it to be honest it's kind of keeping my attention a little bit seeing them but not a lot to report I am doing a knit front back instead of backwards loop cast on to increase I did one backwards loop cast on one round and I don't know it doesn't speak to me and that's okay, so I've, that's the only modification that I've made, which is changing the increase style. Yeah, we'll see how we get on with these. I think, oh, this is, this Progress Keeper is from Steph of Woolen Witch, who is hopefully going to be at the Southern Wall Show, so that will be nice. I can, maybe I'll take these as my project to knit on and be like, look. In fact, I should remember, I'll change it now, so that. Next time I record and show you, I can actually show you the the correct progress. So we've we've marked up here. Yes, and this yarn is gorgeous and dyed using indigo. And Jenny sent this to me very kindly. I she didn't ask me to talk about it. She just said she she makes yarn and would I like to try it? And it is made using Romney and Merino and I've never used Romney so I was very very grateful to receive this and it's 100% sourced in the US it's fingering weight 3 pi and there is 400 yards per 100 grams 
Um, yes, and it's Forage and Sew Dye Works who are based in Hudson Valley, in, in, over in the States. I am... <laughs> I don't know, why am I in such a funny mood? Funny for me, not like you're probably looking and going, hmm? You're not funny. I know! Okay, let's put this away. But yes, I'm really enjoying knitting these. It's very simple. It's going to be a practical project. I think it will go with my spiritual guardian cow. It will go with my spring intentions and those things, but they're also going to be able to be put underneath uh, mittens and fingerless mitts. And while I'm here, I cast on the smallest size and I do think they're going to be perfect. They fit nice and snug. Um, like they're going, they are going to fit underneath mittens quite well. So yes, yes, very, very content. Put this one down. Oh, I've been waffly. I don't, I don't know about project bags. I, I, I show them if I'm using them. I don't, often there'll be times where I don't show a project bag and that's because it's been sat by the sofa or it's just left somewhere. But the this and the first one were made by Nats Knits Crafts, who I'm not sure is making bags at the moment. But this, both of these have just been really sweet surprises. Um, uh, Nats and Natalia actually made Alex and I matching bags and we both use them all the time because they're so like heavy duty and they're not, they don't look massive. But I actually had the two British wool cones in here. One was 500 grams, one was 125 and my bouquet as I was knitting it for quite some time. But this handle is perfect for on the go. So anyway, yeah. Living in here is a new cast on and some extra needles because human whirlwind today apparently um let's show you the yarn first so this yarn is by Peyton and daughter who is Peyton daughter on instagram and this is hand spun and was like hand spun intentionally for me which makes my brain melt um by lovely lorraine who just so happens to be one of one I would have said at school we were definitely friends. I know I haven't we've not been in touch in a long, long time, but one of my very good friends from school, his mother. So this is really exciting and really like, I don't know, particularly sweet, I guess. Um, and this is Hebridean wool that actually, Lorraine carded four times, which to me sounds like a lot. I, again, I don't really know too much about you know and that's what i'm hoping to continue like continue to learn but once or twice seems like normal but four seems a lot and it is super super soft because of that like way more than i could have imagined from hebridean because when i've been doing my research in in the past it seemed like hebridean was a lot for carpets and things but this is so nice and I'd had it for a while and it had been sitting here with this lovely skein too, which is also Hebridean, but uh, more of a black brown, whereas this one's sort of more of a a grey brown black or grey brown. Um, this one was 199 grams and this is 61 grams, but I don't know what Lorraine uses to wash these, but they smell amazing. Tiniest bit sheepy, but almost not sheepy at all. Um, and that one's going to be knitted into something very special. But when we were away, I just wanted something that I could knit on that was larger needles, very easy to knit. And as I had mentioned before, I was going to re-knit something like the Grain Shawl, probably not, but something like it. And I did. It, it's something like the Grain Shawl for sure. I, I cast on and I'm doing increases at either side using yarn overs. 
So I've got two in the middle and one on each end. And it's just garter. I'm hoping that at some point I will do a bit of texture. But I'm not... I, as I'm knitting, I'm getting less and less inclined to because I'm just enjoying this and the way it's going to sit against the neck I think will just be lovely and a, a wonderful replacement for the other version of the grain shawl that I'd knitted pre before. But I don't know. I think I'd like to do something interesting either with the bind off or just a little block. Um, this is how much I've got left. I haven't weighed it. I should maybe give it away and see roughly how much I'm using so that I can get an idea of, you know, how much I can knit, how far I can go. Maybe, maybe I spin something myself for a, the block and then cast off, do another few, like, you know, another inch or so at the bottom with this. Oh, look at us <laughs> being creative and designing, designing on the YouTubes. Oh, I'm really weird today. Um, Yes, so this could go many, many different ways. It's got some jingly jangles and these are, again, these are like, I, I talk about them often, but these are stitch markers by Time Weaver, who is Nicole. Um, and these ones were made for Alex, but I really love them and borrow them often. <laughs> but Nicole hand makes these using semi-precious stones and you can kind of feel the energy and the love that she puts into them, so they make they make me smile every time I see them. And it's amazing how frequently they go with the projects that I'm working on. Um, maybe it's because they're natural, I'm not sure, but they just do. And I am using some bamboo. I haven't used bamboo needles in a little while, and I do love the way the bamboo feels on my hands. I think. I think I kind of started being a bit more speedy and with the, I've spoken about needles in a full video in the past, but I, I kind of fear towards bamboo in the winter when it starts to get cold and these stay warm in the hands, but in the summer, if you've got really warm sticky hands, these can get a bit, not sticky, but a little bit grippier, um, so I much prefer stainless steel or the metal needles which is something again that I'm still continuing to learn what I love because I think maybe when I did the needles you know talked about my journey with needles so far my preference was bamboo but I do think it's becoming seasonal which is a bit silly to have two sets in the same size but I have one my most of my metal needles now are four inch and my bamboo ones are five inch and again this is like a, a good preference these I, I love the four inch ones for sleeves generally I can get away with using a 16 inch cable which is what I did with my bouquet and the four inch needles until I do the ribbing so yeah I don't really don't enjoy magic loop especially for sleeves so that is my preference and then often I think I've got up to 3.5 mil or 3.75 mil DPNs really short ones that I do the ribbing with so yeah that's this short I'm excited to see where this goes because apparently I don't even know where it's going <laughs> um, but yeah I also really hope I find the other grain shawl so that I can gift it um, Mum, if you're watching, I was going to give it to Karen. I feel like that's who that belongs to. It will go beautifully with her linen, beachy, country vibe. Maybe I've had enough coffee. <laughs> um, finally, today, I will talk a little bit about a little bit more spinning. I don't have much to say on this one. This doesn't have as fancy a tag because I'm either going to keep it for myself or give it, probably give it to the recipient of my first ever mini skein. I think if she gets this and 
the other amount will have enough to do a hat probably. 160 meters. Yeah. Um, but this is some Gotland that I spun. It is two ply, I guess. <laughs> and I did spin it, I believe, in the opposite way to what many do. And I think that's another thing that helped me get the hang of it. I think I had previously been spinning. I can't remember which way it is now. Anti clockwise? No, I'd been spinning clockwise because that's what I was told to do the first time, I think. And then I started spinning anti clockwise and listening to music, and for some reason that seemed to click. So hopefully this knits up okay still because of it. And then I then twisted it clockwise to ply it together. And I did that using my drop spindle and this one is actually I now I it has on the bottom it's from the fiber hut but I got it in a set from Kaz of Woolly Yarns who does like these big chunky bold colors very cool I would very much recommend having a little look at what she does I know that she's got a crochet cushion set that's like really really popular um so yeah, as you can see, I've been spinning something else, and this is Shrunkley's fibre, which is at Shunkley's. Oh, blimey, I'm, maybe I'm coffee drunk. I, I'd never really heard of them before. It was quite nice. I wanted to purchase a little bit more fibre that I could practice with that wasn't going to cost lots of money, because, you know, learning something I think having affordability does very much help. But this is 100% uh, white Ragnar and completely non superwash for me, the perfect combination. And it was hand dyed, which I've wanted to experiment and experience changing of colors in a, in hope that it would encourage me to keep spinning. And as you can see it 100% has. Um, and then getting to try a new fiber to me was something that I wanted. So I can't remember, but I believe this was six pound for a hundred grams, which is incredibly affordable. Uh, you know, when you think that's the same price as a hundred grams of spun Jacob ball from West Yorkshire Spinners, but this has been hand dyed. And obviously you invest time, but if you, if you enjoy it, it's six pound for however many hours of fun. So yeah, I think it's this is a really good way for me to see colours change, to feel a different fibre. You know, it, it's so different to the Gotland. The Gotland really is a lot more slick and a lot, a lot of drape to it. I'm excited to ply this. I am going to ply this. The colours have been really satisfying, actually. A, a, a lovely palette I've been trying to, you know, I'm experimenting with the colours that I love and this is veering towards that grunge mermaid <laughs> that I was talking about before um, that I used for my, the most recent cardigan I knitted by Albiona, who used to be Albi Hand Knits. Um, yes, so really enjoying doing this. I do think I would love to try a lighter spindle i think that will bring me a bit more joy at being able to spin finer i'm quite happy with this it's definitely you know it's definitely not perfect but i'm pretty happy with the results so far and yeah i think i think that's it i th um, I know that I have two of two of the next garments I'd like to knit planned. I hope to start doing more gift knitting. I have totally been taken in by Albiona's Tolk pattern, which is a cardigan, and I recently started a cardigan and tore it out because it wasn't perfect. Like it, it wasn't going to be worn. And it wasn't torn out, it was frogged back and it put back into lovely cakes. 
but I think I'm going to actually knit this in this colour of Lopi, but I'll use Pluto Lopi probably, the unspun. So that's going to be a project that I do going forward. It's got lovely shaping, it looks like it's going to be just what my wardrobe is missing, a, a, a more densely knitted black cardigan. I have got a big loose alpaca one, but when the weather starts to turn, it isn't going to do its job in keeping me as warm as an Icelandic garment will. And again, it's the band t-shirts, cardigans, uh, dresses. It will go with everything that I own basically um, and just be a really good staple. And then the other one I'm casting on, I'm going to swatch for that maybe, maybe this week. Uh, the Yell Cardigan by Marie Wallen. And there's a lot of uh, podcasters, a lot of knitters taking part in uh, I think it's hosted by Nitty, uh, Nikki of Knitting with Cat Hair and a few other people but Nikki seems to be the one that I'm most aware of so she's taking control and it's kind of really nice seeing everyone already starting on their projects but for me this is going to be a project that will be a long term one it will be using a lot of yarns that are quite special to me some of them are Jameson and Smith very normal, normal yarns or accessible, easy to get hold of yarns. Others will be, um, I'm hoping to really create a balance here. I think I might use some Telespin, which is a Norwegian uh, mohair and lamb's wool. I will be using probably some yarn that I purchased from Marina Skewer, who is lovely. Uh, and yeah, a few other special yarns to me. Um, mixed in with some more affordable ones so that it's a lovely amalgamation of a memory and a heirloom and yes I'm excited it's got three steaks you steak for the sleeves and the body and I can't wait to try an all-over fair isle pattern that is something that I've not yet done and yeah really have waffle today Okay, maybe we'll take two breaths, two nice long deep breaths. Feel free to join in if you'd like. Yes, so I really hope this has found you having a nice time. I hope you've maybe been making something. If you are knitting on something that is particularly bringing you joy and you feel like you'd like to share it, please do share. It's really inspiring and interesting to know what's being made whilst we sit and have this little chat. And hopefully you can inspire another maker too. Um, I hope that you'll get up to some making and something fun during the next week or so. I am excited to hopefully share with you our trip to the Southern Wall Festival next week. Festival? Show? It's a wall festival. Um, yeah, please do take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and don't forget to love each other. Here we are at the 12th century Finkel Priory, having a cornetto, just like the monks would do.
kind of apple is it? Rayburn? Cox? Brownlee? Cooking apple. 